Yeah, the hate, the grind, the sweat, the blood, the time, my motivation. Ay, I work too hard, too long, and I be in the conversation. My team been up, way up, ain't nothing less than domination. I got the game and say what I can get in combination. Motivation, all this money on my mind, that's my motivation. You be talking, but you not up in the conversation. They all wanting me to stop, that's my motivation. Yeah, my motivation. Yeah, motivation. Yeah, my motivation. From the campus of Marion University, we are thrilled to bring you an outstanding game between two of the top 11 teams in the NAIA National Rankings. Marion checks in at number six. Their opponents, the Patriots from the University of the Cumberlands in far southern Kentucky, come in 8-0 undefeated at number 11 on the season. My name is Greg Rakestraw, joined by Jan Bozier. Thank you so much for joining us for Marion Women's Basketball here on the ISC Sports Network. Jan for Marion, they successfully have gotten through their first three league contests, 3-0. League play resumes for the Knights as of early January. But this, sandwiched around finals, is the first of two tests against teams from the Mid-South Conference that are both in the top 15 in the country. Cumberland's number 11. Georgetown of Kentucky comes here in 11 days. They're number 13. What do you expect from Steve Brooks' squad tonight? Well, I tell you, you're right. This is going to be a really good matchup. Both these ball clubs, Greg, kind of mimic each other. Listen, the Cumberland's Patriots, they want to push it. They average just under 95 a game. So Temple's going to be interesting as well as a re very good rebounding ball club. And they can shoot the three. They're shooting it at 38%. They're going to be a tough a matchup today for the Marion Knights. Let's talk about some keys to this contest. What are you focusing on for both of these two teams? Well, board battle. Listen, uh, the Patriots, Greg, listen to this. 19 offensive rebounds a game. So Marion's going to have to really battle hard on the board. Temple, we already mentioned the Patriots want to push it, and you got to defend the three. Both of them shoot it. Knights at 35. The Patriots at 38. It should be a good one. All right, we will take this quick time out when we come back to the PE Center. Starting lineups, opening tip-off, and more. Again, last game before semester break, and that young lady on your screen, and Allison Bossy. Oh, yes, she is back in the lineup for Steve Brooks' squad, the former Indiana All-Star from Brownsburg High School. Back with more in a moment as you're watching Man University Women's Basketball here on the ISC Sports Network. Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Lock in your rate with pre-approval. It's fast, free, and makes buying the car of your dreams easier. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Meet Kate. She has a lot to juggle. Family, work, it can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point, her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. Now, add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 3.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Back inside the PE Center, and let's throw it down to the floor for Mitch Huppert, our PA address announcer this evening for tonight's starting lineups. First for the visitors from the University of the Cumberlands. Guard number zero, Cassie Monday. At another guard, number 15, Destiny Hayworth. At center, number 20, Lakin Burke. At guard, number 23, Amira Steele. And at guard, number 24, Kaylee Monday. Head coach of the Patriots in his sixth season, Rick Reeves. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineups for the Patriots of the University of the Cumberlands. Partner alluded to, this Cumberlands team gets up and down the floor, Jan. They are averaging just shy of 95 points a game. 
for the first eight played this season. And what I like about that for the Knights, it's a nice little wrinkle. You know, some teams come in here, try to slow it down. Others put it, you know, put the pedal to the metal, and that's what the Cumberland's Patriots are going to do today. Listen, they score by committee. They have three girls in double figures, but nobody much over 12 points. So they have a lot of girls who participate. But for the Knights, I tell you, how about the play right now of Collier? She's been consistent, but what I like about this Knights ball club, of the nine games, there have been four other girls lead them in scoring. With that, let's get back to Mitch Hepper for the Marion starters. That center, a 5'11", fifth-year senior from Indianapolis, number 42, Kennedy Gerard. At the point guard, 5'5", five five senior from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, number one, Jayla Wayner. At guard, 5'7", senior from Brownsburg, Indiana, wearing number 25, Allison Bossy. And rounding out the night's starting lineup, a six-foot senior from Danville, Indiana, number 13, Ella Collier. Head coach of the Knights in his third season, Steve Brooks. Ladies and gentlemen, the starting lineup for your Marion University Knights. Well, you're touching on or talking about Ella Collier and what she means to this team. Again, she is the reigning NAIA National Player of the Year. She is trending in the direction of becoming the program's all-time leading scorer at some point in time, late January, early February. But she would tell you herself, she's got the best start that she could have this season, but she's got such an experienced group around her. This Marion team returned virtually all of their points from a season ago. Here's what I like about it. First of all, she's so consistent. You can just know she's going to get her 18 to 20 points. And, Greg, I think both of us would agree there's more points in the tank if they need them from her. But what I really like the fact is some of the girls are stepping it up. How about the play of Abby McNally? Averaging a double-double as a sophomore. Stacy Lee, Adam Abubakar, and Troy Ramey, our three-person officiating crew. Thank you so much for joining us for a good one. This non-conference tilt here on the ISC Sports Network. Collier on the bounce, finds Gerard, and Gerard scores it. Well, that's what happens when she gets so much attention. She really sees the floor, Greg. Immediately on the attack, the blow by by Monday. We'll talk about a case of the Mondays, if you will, for this Cumberland squad. They'll pick up full court pressure. Cassie Monday, Kaylee Monday, the two leading scorers, both at 12 points a game. Again, for Marion, Jayla Wainer in as the point guard. Tamia Perryman has missed some time, but she's back for Marion potentially. Wainer's three does not go. Here we see how much, if at all, if we see Perryman tonight. She is in uniform, but again, doesn't mean necessarily that she is guaranteed to play. Boy, you really like that the way the Patriots are moving. They, and they never stop moving. Here's going to be a turnover. They press, they move, they move. It's going to be a really interesting battle for this defense of the Marion Knights. It, it would be easy to critique the number of turnovers that the University of the Cumberlands has. They have 140. Uh, that's not terrible through eight games, but it is simply just kind of chalk it up to the amount of yeah. possessions that they have a game. If you get them on the floor the way they do, you have a few turnovers. Gerard, no. McNally, yes. Is. And clearly, that is an advantage for virtually every team Marion plays because of their overwhelming height advantage this starting five has. And, and she just plays so well underneath. And just a sophomore. To put it in perspective, when Allison Bossy was out, Marion got even bigger. Josie Trable, the six-foot freshman from East Central, came in to replace Bossy. Trable will be one of the first players to see off the bench in tonight's game for Marion. Bossy drew the double team and then just couldn't stop that momentum, drug that pivot foot. First Marion turnover. The team that Marion sees on a regular basis that would play a style similar to Cumberland's would be Olivet Nazarene. Yeah. Bethel in their league has kind of tried to play that style, but simply has not the talent, frankly, to, to kind of properly play that style. Bethel is more of, of the frenetic Grinnell pace. This is a bit more controlled than that. Fight for the loose ball. Who touched it last? Collier did. Well, you make a great point. You have to have the personnel to play at that pace. I mean, a lot of people love to play at that pace, but don't have the personnel to match it.
turn in the low blocks. Shot is good. That is Lincoln Burke that got the bucket to go. Nine and a half points and four and a half rebounds a game. Again, in this style where so many players play at, at breakneck speeds, there's only four players on this Cumberland's roster that have averaged more than 20 minutes a game so far this year. Well, let's not forget, there are no seniors on this Cumberland's Patriots ball club. A lot of really good juniors. Call, you're able to get through the trap. Wayner turns down the two. Bossy oh, will not nice. turn that shot down. If she's open and set, she's going to bury that more times than well, not. And that's what she brings. That's that added three-point shooting that she can do, Greg. So Bossy again back to that knee injury. Burke then hits one from 15 feet. So far, Cumberland's three of five from the floor. Same for the Marion Knights. Well, wow, the Patriots look awful comfortable right now, especially on the offensive end. But to, Cumber to the Cumberland's credit, I think they also realize, hey, this is a bit of a different animal than we normally play as they kind of backed off that full court pressure. Wainer, short corner, Gerard. no. And Gerard couldn't corral the loose ball. Burke did a great job to tip that away. So the Patriots have to go in front for the first time. Monday, good help by Collier, oh, poked it free. Great hands by Collier, Greg. And then Gerard maybe was trying to do a bit too much. Bossy stops, thinks Bingo. about it. Bingo, bingo. Man, yep. how good is that, Greg? Just added value. They do, they have not been shooting a lot of threes in uh, up till now, but boy, I, that was certainly help. They've been averaging, making just about six a game. Bossy's return will help spur that again. This is a Marion team that doesn't have to connect on the three to be successful because they can. They are so good defensively and have such a size advantage. Gerard. Able to work around Steele that time in terms of tracking down the loose ball. The offensive rebound for the Patriots. We talked about that. Knights are really going to have to check out. Wainer, the senior from Pittsburgh. The rare, shouldn't say that, out-of-state recruit because there's two on the floor for Marion. And mostly Indiana team. Gerard, here's the shot clock countdown. Fires and misses. Spot up three in the corner for Cumberland's does not go, and Collier collects the loose change. And when she gets the rebound, she will lead the break for Marion. And this may be a one-player 94-foot drive. Blocking foul, and Collier will shoot two. Well, take a look at this. This is where the experience of a Collier comes into play. She's seen the defender, Greg, was never set, and so she's going to make that contact intentionally, forcing the official to have to call that foul. Really great play. And Collier loves getting to the line, a 50, 40, 90 candidate during her time here at Marion. Collier, 46 of 46 so far this year from the free throw line. So Marion doubling up the Patriots here early, but Again, folks, there's going to be a lot of points scored in this one. Collier tipped it away, able to track it down and keep it in the court of play. Collier's really being active here early, Greg, especially with her hands. I like it. Well, Collier's such a heady player. Former Indiana All-Star from Danville High School. Good basket cut. Bossy, the block was clean, but it was the guard that had the reach in. Two free throws coming up for Marion. Foul going to be whistled against Kaylee Monday. Kaylee wears number 24. Cassie wears number zero. The junior duo from Clark Range, Tennessee. It is so great to see Allison Bossy move as well as she's moving. Bossy a miss from the free throw line. Bossy on the season. They get there very often. She is five of seven now from the stripe. But what she does exceedingly well, you've seen it already, she's made two threes in limited tries this year. And she's missed three games due to injury. Allison, 12 of, or excuse me, 13 of 22, including tonight's two made threes from behind the arc. And, and they've got to have that. There's so much pressure on Collier that, that she's going to be open, Greg, a lot from outside. Foul going to be called against McNally. That was Channing Lewis on the drive.
Another quick substitution as Monday will check back in. Well, we knew the Patriots would rotate players, and man, they sure do. They get a lot of girls, a lot of playing times, Greg. Fresh legs go along with that. If you made the trip, you're going to get in the game is, is kind of the, the, the running thought. Drive, shot block. That was bossy. Shot clock is at eight. Really good defense, Greg. Kept the hand straight up and kept from getting a foul. Good defense without fouling. Now that is the M.O. of this Marion team. Always amongst the best in the NAI period, but especially on defense. Pull up shot. Does not get the roll, but oh. good inside position. Put back basket is good. Well, there's another one of those offensive rebounds. I looked at that stat and said 19 of it. You can see why. That is Lewis in the inbounds pass thrown away by Collier. Spot up three by Monday. No. Burke, the rebound and fouled by McNally. Second foul against McNally. And two free throws coming up. Greg, I got it for five unofficial offensive rebounds right now. That is the second turnover committed by Marion. Second foul on McNally. So free throws coming. Lake and Burke on the season. 58% from the line. As a team, the Cumberlands, 691. In terms of their percentage. Well, McNally has to set out, Greg, with two personals. That changes the dynamics of what Marion does. And they will go a little bit smaller. Well, it's not just two fouls. It's two fouls early. We're looking at first period, 342. Sarah Meyer Sobot will come in. He's more of a, of a guard. Second year in the program for Sarah. D1 transfer from SIU Edwardsville. She'll relieve a little bit of the pressure off of Wainer. And Collier will obviously play a safety valve. In terms of bringing the ball in the front court as well. Shot clock at 13. Taken away. Third Marion giveaway. Runner too strong. Bossy able to snare the rebound for the Knights. Well, right now the Patriots are really guarding the paint, Greg. A matchup of 2-3 at times. Bossy. Oh, she got a hammer. Lost the handle. Back-to-back -back turnovers make it three in a row for Marion. Oh, nice pass. Burke, the layup. Really pretty pass. Patriots doing exactly what we thought they would do, Greg. Push, push, push. Burke with eight of the 12 for the Cumberlands. It's back to a one-point game. Patriots back to a matchup now, man-to-man. -man. For this Marion team, as Myra Sova fires a three, that does not go. And not very many second opportunities right now either. And again, just beating the defender down the floor. Lewis lays it up and in, and here comes a timeout from Steve Brooks. Not happy. It is an 8-1 run by the University of the Cumberlands, and the number 11 team has taken the early lead against the number six ranked team in the country. This will be a full timeout, and we will step aside with them. Back to the PE Center in Indianapolis in a moment as you're watching Marion basketball on ISC. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. So 14-13 after Marion had the better of the first couple of minutes, this kind of continued wave of pressure started to catch up against the Knights. And again, Jayla Wainer, an experienced player, not the starting point guard for Marion. That's to me a Perryman. And again, I'm not, she's just coming back from a knee injury. Not sure we'll see her tonight. But kind of that wearing down process of that constant pressure of the Cumberlands starting to show up already here in the first quarter. Yeah, it's relentless pressure too. It's not just token pressure. Defensively and offensively, they just want to keep their foot to the pedal, and rightfully so. Is if you give them just a little bit of space because you're not ready to meet that, they make you pay, and they have. Aaliyah Evans will check in, the junior from Greensburg. 
Tends to be one of the leading offensive weapons off the bench, a little more than five points a game. And Evans will bring the ball to the front court. Call, you're getting a respite for Marion. See exactly how long her absence from the game might be. We're, uh, we're just at the two minute mark, trying to stretch that plus the quarter to give her a little bit of rest here. The key for Marion, Greg, right now, can you hold serve with two minutes without her in there? Nally sits with two fouls for Marion. She had a game of 20 and 20 earlier this year. The slip. Oh, nice and pass. Another easy bucket for the Cumberlands. Great. They really see the floor, at least early. They really have tried to make that extra pass, and it's paid off. Lewis with six, and again, it's been all from the post players. And that is doubly concerning for the Knights because, again, that is where they hang their hat defensively is on the low block. And Collier's break is over. She's going right back to the scores table. Evans from 16, no. And you're seeing now Marion almost kind of matching yep. Cumberland's in terms of quick shots. Well, we talked about tempo and the keys of the game, and quite honestly, Marion's playing a little quicker than they typically do in their comfort zone. And that ball screen at the free throw line is killing Marion. Yeah, absolutely. As Burke gets another bucket, she's got 10. She's 4 of 5 from the line, and this run is now 12-1 for the visitors. Patriots very well schooled in that high ball screen, and they're just getting really good looks off of it. Gerard on the attack, misses. Fight for the loose ball, able to track it down. Evans steps into a 15-footer and buries it. Needed that, needed that. So Evans gets her first bucket. And the looks have come easily the last few times down the floor for the visitors from Kentucky. Five second difference, shot clock and game clock. Good job by Evans to hold her ground. Good defense. It's going to be a turnover. Yeah, she's still really the good defense. And that allows Collier to come back into the game. Hayworth returns for the Patriots. And Leanna McNulty in for the first time for the University of the Cumberlands. Well, the Patriots make you play defense in the half court all the time. If you are not engaged defensively, they make you pay. Evans, they call her own number here. Tried to find Collier and couldn't get it to her in time. That nope, shot not will not be in time. So Marion trails in their home floor in this matchup of nationally ranked teams. Patriots 18, Knights 15. We're back in a moment as you're watching Marion Women's Basketball on the ISC Sports Network. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Tonight's game on ISC presented in part by our friends at AAA Roofing. When it rains, it pours, so trust the pros at AAA Roofing. That's who we call. Special thanks to AAA Roofing for their support of Marion Athletics. Greg Rakestraw, Jan Bozier with you. Cumberland's 8 of 17 from the floor. Marion 5 of 13. Both teams with four turnovers. And again, it's a Marion team that looks a bit unsettled, and that is rare. Perhaps to the Cumberlands for making that happen early in this game. Yeah, I absolutely agree with you. You know, the Patriots got comfortable really quick on the road. And that and this is a no senior ball club. A lot of times you don't have that experience. You don't get comfortable on the road as quick as they did. This is a team in the University of the Cumberlands that frankly is only to play one overly competitive game so far. That was a month ago against Milligan of Tennessee. An eight-point win. They played their last game in Indiana as well, winning over at the Pomeroys of St. Mary's of the Woods last Tuesday by 18 points. Monday from the elbow. Got it. So Monday gets her second field goal. By Rosova. And again, Mary going to let their bigs bring the ball to the floor. Just a little less pressure that way. 
After the Knights game, Marion is off for 11 days. Myra Soba's shot is good. Great seal by Evans to free her up. Really good look, you're right. The seal was there and it just made a really easy look. Well, I said Myra Soba, that's Trable. My yep. apologies, I think they switched the numbers. So Trable gets the bucket. Josie, the freshman from East Central and the entry pass a bit high. So Hayworth throws it away. Let's talk about Trable. And Trable was gonna play at the division one level at Wofford, kinda changed her mind late in recruitment. Elected to stay at the small college level and play closer to home. And you and I are familiar with East Central because of their football prowess yeah. over the years. Yes, sir. Having just won the 4A championship here in this state Thanksgiving weekend. Evans, the dish eventually. Gerard lets the defender fly by and missed it. But Gerard will try again and draws the foul. Yeah, really nice look. Evans got in the paint. She's a really good passer. Take a look. Crossover dribble behind the back, did it all in that play, and then the no-look pass. So Gerard to shoot two. Evans, really smart ball player offensively. She sees the floor, dishes well, can shoot the ball. Gerard, a 62% free throw shooter, rattles that one home. She is the only player for Marion that has been to the line more than Collier has this year. That was Gerard's 50th attempt as the grad student from nearby Pike High School. Well, let me tell you something. We got a little battle going on between her and Brooke. Brooke, Brooke, Brooke I should say. Number 20 for the Patriots. They are flat out battling. Great read by Collier. Collier, the fundamental yes, bounce sir. pass to Allison Bossy. Hey, little fake there. Made the defender buy that she was going to shoot. It's just a beautiful dish pass. So we're tied at 20. Turnover by Cumberland's their sixth of the game. Marion now nine points off of those six turnovers. New face in the game. And Fredericks for Cumberland's Gerard. Oh, wow. That was deemed to be a clean block. Monday took quite the tumble. But she pops right back up. Take a great look from this elevated angle, and I would agree with that. But Monday caromed off of Gerard, not Gerard kind of swatting down on that play. Shot clock at six. Step back three, no, and did just graze the rim, but the effort the same. Marion takes back over. Well, the half-court defense was much more intense that time by the Knights. I think the message was loud and clear after that last time out. Listen, partner, as you well know, regardless whether it's the first to 50 or first to 100, Steve Brooks expects one thing. You better guard somebody <laughs> when you're exactly. on the floor. He was not happy, and he made it loud and clear. And since that time frame, the defense shall we say, has been picked up a notch. They can survive some stretches on offense, but if you're not guarding, <laughs> no. there's a problem. Especially against this ball club. Backdoor cut by Collier, and then Collier thought that Gerard would make the corresponding move. She did not. Uh, Collier got no man's land. Pretty good pass. She ran out of real estate, had nowhere to go. Fifth Marion giveaway. Six points off of those turnovers for Cumberland's. Shot clock and a dozen. Mismatch. Fredericks, offensive foul. Collier just stayed in there, and it's Fredericks turned and got her with that elbow. Well, the key defensively, Greg, great point, is she didn't sit in there and push and shove. Little contact, the hands are straight up. And see, there's the elbow. There's the call right there. Just good, clean, straight, straight up defense by Collier. Evans couldn't run the floor, yep. I'm going to give her a five anyway, but that was not a made basket. Not, so when she moved, put. that was a travel. Yep. Either way, it's an, an infraction against Marion. Yep. Got to stay put there. You can lead with one foot, but you can't move both. Frederick's back out. Burke returns. And the aforementioned Got a half help. clash of the Titans continues. And her shot scrapes a little paint off the rim, but falls eventually. So Burke with 12, and again, it is rare that post players come in and be as effective immediately as she has been against the combination of well, Gerard and Collier. The thing you see about her early, she's really active for the, an inside player, Greg. Bossing her first miss from three-point range tonight. She's three of five from the floor in total. 
She was two of two from three before that. Constant whir of activity offensively from Cumberlands. Hayworth drives on Collier. Collier the clean block. And then Girard able to knock away the ball on the save attempt. Collier's defense has been outstanding here in the second period. Really smart defensive plays by her. But then Collier lost the handle. Extra pass leads to a three for Steele. Got it. Yes, sir. Talked about their three-point shooting. They shoot 38%, Greg, when they're open. And I can tell you this, Bossy is still kind of working her way back into fitness with that leg injury. She needs a breather right now. She uh, tells the tanks about on E. Evans off the square, got it. By the way, good news for Marion. Tamia Perriman's about to check back in. Yeah. First time she's played tonight. And again, she'll be on a, on a minute's limit. Well, to your point, at the pace of this ball game, Greg, you're going to have to go to your bench. We're going to see how good it is tonight. And Marion has a deep bench. Coach Brooks is known to play a somewhat short rotation, but you cannot do that against a team that plays the way the Cumberlands wants to play. Well, especially when they have the lead. Block again by Collier. Shot clock at seven. And here comes basically the top two point guards for Marion. Now, Bossy will stay on the floor as Collier and Gerard will have a seat. New face in there for the Patriots. First time that Jaden Cox has come on. Junior from Sharps Chapel, Tennessee. Well, they're looking at Collier's face. She may have took a, a, a finger or an elbow to the face. They went down there to check on her, and she waved him off, said she was all right. Bit of a bailout that time for Cumberlands as a reach-in foul called against Marriott with three on the 30. It will now bump back up to 20. Marion will go a bit deeper into their roster as well. Good shot there. She was rubber nose a little bit. May have caught an elbow or a hand in, in the nose. Step back three by Monday. High Archer does not go. Taylor double just checked in and grabbed a rebound. And yeah, that's what you want to do. That's when you know your bench is really helping you. Comes right off that bench and makes a good rebound. Double and treble. The really two new faces that get to see time on a regular basis for Marion. Bossy. Extra pass. Perryman couldn't oh. get it to go. Oh, my. Good move. Use the glass. Marion now 8 of 19 from the floor. Cumberland's 11 of 25. The pull-up good by Steele. Steele's second field goal in seven tries, but Cumberland pushes their largest lead back to five as we are midway through this second quarter. Well, Steele averages just under 12. She certainly can put it up. They have three girls in double figures and all around that 12 points per game mark, Greg. And again, Perryman is a talented offensive player, but she's kind of breaking through a little bit of ring rust out there. A chance to make it a three-score lead. Perryman has missed four games due to that knee injury, and she's missed chunks of really the last two years dealing with that. Again, a smaller Marion lineup. Hayworth corner three, no good. Great job by Perryman to block out. And now, Knights have numbers. Seven points in the quarter for Marion. Nine in the quarter for the Patriots. And Wainer's pass thrown away. Coach Brooks trying to buy a little extra time, a rest for Collier. Try to hope that his girls can hang in there for a little bit longer and keep her as fresh as he can for the second half. She may have to play a lot of minutes. Had he play by Wainer, just got in the field of vision there to kind of throw the opposite player off. And Evans lost the handle. Hayworth, spot up three. Not that time. Bossy. I think they're going to claim that she committed the foul in terms of trying to go down and get the rebound which will keep the ball here on the second Marion foul of the quarter. The well, Knights have went a little while now, Greg, with not much offense. But Evans got lost in the wash, and on the drive, Hayworth gets the bucket. 
her first made bucket in six tries. Gerard now will check back in that stoppage for the Knights, but Cumberland's enjoys their largest lead at seven. Extra pass to Evans. Evans up and under. Pass was a little low. But second time around, got it to go. And again, and Evans can kind of play all five spots if you need her to. Usually she's facing the basket, not posting up. But again, because both Collier and Gerard took a seat, Evans slides to the five. Knights need a stop right now in the half court, Greg. With 228, got to get a stop right here. Get some momentum change going into halftime. Hayworth fires oh and connects. My. I think Evans is in a bit of a need of a respite. Well, Hayworth, a really nice three-pointer. and They have not been disappointing. Talked about shooting 38%. They're at least that. Well, she's 43% from the three-point area this season. Just the second made three for Cumberland so far. And they lead by eight. Perryman, extra pass to Wainer. Shot clock at seven. Double fires the three. That will not go. Not a bad look, though. She was open. Got to hit that. Knights with three players ready to check in. Pull up by Steele. Oh Let's do it. Man, they are flat out in rhythm right now offensively, Greg. And the Knights trail by double digits. Not only do the Patriots look comfortable, they're really scoring really in a comfortable range with great shot selection. Marion just looks lost offensively right now, which, again, for this experienced group is very rare. Well, you see what the Patriots are doing. They got the talls just sagging down low. Doubles three is up and no good, and Monday could elect that roll out, but we'll elect to push the tempo. Steele, three, no. Bossy's rebound tip, but Burke tracks it down. And Cumberland's now will reset. Shot clock is at 10. Again, the high ball screen has been what's been so effective all game long. Burke, no. But again, a smaller Marion lineup, and Perryman gave the foul. Another offensive rebound. They just don't have anybody in there right now that matches up with Burke at all, Greg. So Olivia Faust will come on here for Marion. First time we have seen her. And Collier and Gerard return. Marion just nine made field goals here in the first half. The two shots for Burke. Connects. We talked about how good the junior class is. Burke just a sophomore, Greg. From Rose Hill, Virginia. Averaging just under 10 per game. She's got 11. In the first half, Marion tied it at 20. So it is a 15 to four run here by Cumberland. It's gotta be call your time. They have got to get this offense going through her right now. 32.6 seconds, Greg, but they, she's she's the go-to. They have got to get her the ball. The Collier. offense gotta run through her. Four turnovers for Collier. She has not attempted a field goal. Yeah, that just, she's too good. You can't, that's too many points left on the floor. Now, she has two free throws. She'll pull from 16, left that one short. I think Burke, Burke got a, a hand on it, Greg. Yep. And with that, Cumberland's now can hold for a final look of the half. But barring a miscue by Cumberland's, Marion will be trailing by double figures going into halftime on their own floor. And again, folks, that does not happen very often. Monday to Monday, wide right, rebound by double. Looking for help, almost turns it over, and that's going to be a foul, but frankly, Cumberland's had one to give. That will not hurt him. Yeah. I think we have to give the Patriots defense some no credit doubt. here. They have just figured out how to shut that paint down, and it's just been difficult for Marion at best. Faust has to go. We'll fire up from half court, and that will be short. Well, Marion has their work cut out for them, or they potentially could lose on this floor for the first time this year. Right now, it is number 11, University of the Cumberlands, dictating the score to Marion. 
Patriots lead at 35-24. Stay tuned. Halftime show comes right next as you're watching Marion Women's Basketball on the ISC Sports Network. zero sugar this is the pepsi with zero compromises this is pepsi zero sugar this is the pepsi for america's best barbecue worthy of hundred mile detours and a thousand likes looks good this is the pepsi for mopping dipping and dousing whatever you're craving this is the pepsi for you this is the pepsi for serious fans and serious eats this is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about CHIP. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Lock in your rate with pre-approval. It's fast, free, and makes buying the car of your dreams easier. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. The Marion University Knights find themselves in a bit of a predicament. Yes, this program that has won twice the Division II Women's Basketball Championship made last year's national quarterfinals. Now that we are back to one classification, Knights Checked in at 8-1 and one on the season. Their lone loss coming at number 17, Concordia of Nebraska, back in early November. Well, they are trailing by 11. And again, after getting off to a good start, Marion led 12-6. to six. And you seemingly since that time, Jan, been completely out of rhythm offensively. Yeah, that second period was not kind to them offensively. Collier with just two points, Greg. In a game like this, you as a ball club got to know where she is and how to get her the ball. Now, she's got to do her part, too. And I think that's what her coach was telling her. Listen, this is when you are the leader and you've got to call for the ball as well as them looking for you. Stats in half number one from a team perspective. The Patriots shot 44% from the field, 15 of 34, just 2 of 10 from three-point range. They were 3 of 4 from the line. Marion was 9 of 25 from the floor. Two of seven from three-point range, and Bossy made those first two. Marion did not make another three-pointer the rest of the way. Knights were four of six from the free throw line. Nine turnovers by Marion, leading to 13 points for the Cumberlands. Eight turnovers leading to nine points for Marion. Rebounds 23-14 in favor of the University of the Cumberlands. Offensive glass 10-4. Second chance points, 9-5. So, again, there's not a stat that Steve Brooks is going to like. What has to change for Marion in half number two? Well, well you're not shooting the ball well. you got to get to the free throw line, and, and that's not going to happen unless you got some movement in the paint. You pick, you move, you got to post up big. I think this is where Collier, who can produce inside, maybe needs to post up, get that defense to collapse. Right now, they keep spreading and spreading and spreading. And, and the shot selection for Marion, they're slow coming off cuts. They're not moving the ball the way we know Marion has and needs to move. It is a Marion team that's played without a couple of important pieces over the last few weeks. No Allison Bossy, she missed three games. No Tamiya Perryman, she missed four. Those pieces are back. If not at 100%, at least they are back. But the math hasn't added up yet for Marion. 35-24 Patriots lead. Stay tuned. That guy will still be around. And we will have our halftime highlights. Look at the upcoming schedule for both the Marion women as well as the men. You are watching Marion University Basketball here on the ISC Sports Network. Meet Kate. 
She has a lot to juggle. Family, work, it can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. Now, add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 3.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Does your school offer high-quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades 6 through 9 this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Marion University is like a home to me. Campus is where I made friends that I know will last a lifetime. Academics, sports, or arts, Marion's got something for you. Plus, downtown Indy is just 10 minutes away from campus. I'm a huge sports fan. Living in Indy, I've got the Knights, the Colts, and the Pacers. Applying was so fast and easy. I went to Marion for the education, but what I took away was the experience. Marion University offers an exceptional education and an unforgettable experience. Apply today for full scholarship consideration at marion.edu. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. Still waiting? You could have been seen by an orthopedic specialist at Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Avoid the wait, cost, and drama of the ER. Ortho Indy Urgent Care. Orthopedic care without the drama. Find a location near you. 35-24, our score at the break. The visitors from Williamsburg, Kentucky, the University of the Cumberlands, leading the Marion Knights. Again, Cumberlands number 11, Marion number 6 in the country. Today's game presented in part by Pepsi. Grab a Pepsi and some friends and get in the game. Pepsi, proud partner of the Marion University Knights. All right, we'll roll through the highlights here. While we do that, let's give you the individual totals for the Cumberlands. Burke with 13 on 5 of 7 shooting. Seven for Steele, six for Lewis, five for Hayworth, and four for Monday. And again, of the Monday sisters, the points belonged to Cassie in half number one. That's it for the scoring. They had ten players play. Only five scored in the first half. For Marion, nine for Allison Bossy, six for Aaliyah Evans, three for Kennedy Gerard. Two for Abby McNally, two for Ella Collier, two for Josie Trable. They also played 10, uh, six in total scored. McNally played just six minutes. She sat for the last four minutes once she picked up two fouls. Again, Ella Collier officially just one shot attempt. So those are the individual numbers. If you're Steve Brooks, what's your message to your team at halftime? Listen, you've got to match their intensity, number one. Quite honestly, their defense was better than yours in that first half. Listen, if i got a girl who's shooting 1,000% from the free throw line, I'm going to try to get her to the free throw line. Post her up. Get her the foul. Get that ball to her. There, listen, she's, she's no mystery anymore. Everybody around the nation knows who she is, and they're getting the best defensive pressure on her. So you got to mix it up here as a team. She's got to know that. Her team's got to know that. Best thing to do is get her to the free throw line. That gets the defense back in. It may help open up that outside. For Marion, again, they are off until next Saturday because they have hit the uh, finals week. It'll be next week here on campus. They'll play number 13 Georgetown, same league here as the University of the Cumberlands. Then they will go see Fakara Hawkins. You may know, I mean, know her as Fakara Malone that played local college basketball. Her Oakland City team is receiving votes, now members of the River States Conference. That is December the 19th. Then a break for Christmas. Then one final non-conference game for the Knights that is at Concordia of Michigan on December 30th. League play for the Knights resumes on January the 3rd as they take on the Maple Leafs of Goshen College. Again, Marion checks in at number three, at 3-0 in terms of league play, having already had victories over Grace at Spring Arbor and at Taylor. That Taylor game was last Saturday. We'll take this quick time out. When we come back, we'll get you closer to second half action here at the PE Center. Knights will have the ball when we come back. They trail by 11 as you're watching Marion Women's Basketball on the ISC Sports Network.
Wendy's always had great taste. Today, try great taste with zero sugar. This is the Pepsi with zero compromises. This is Pepsi Zero Sugar. This is the Pepsi for America's best barbecue. Worthy of 100 mile detours and 1,000 likes. Looks good. This is the Pepsi for mopping, dipping, and dousing. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. This is the Pepsi for serious fans and serious eats. This is the Pepsi for Sundays at the ballpark and days off at your favorite pizza joint. Right, Aaron? The best slice in New York. Whatever you're craving, this is the Pepsi for you. Meet Chip. 30 years ago, he started a small business with a big idea. Today, there's a new building, a new fleet of equipment, and a new era of leadership. But we know Chip, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he plans to keep growing, building business with the next generation. IMCU is here to help with secure and simple account management tools and commercial financing to grow business. Today, it's all about Chip. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Lock in your rate with pre-approval. It's fast, free, and makes buying the car of your dreams easier. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Both teams getting ready for half number two. The Cumberlands with a 35-24 lead over Marion. Trying to hand Marion a second loss of the season and have the Cumberlands run their unbeaten streak to start the year to nine in a row. Today's game presented in part by BSN Sports. They are the preferred provider of apparel for Marion University Athletics. We rolled you through the upcoming Marion women's schedule. The, the schedule is remarkably similar for the Marion men. They are on the road in Joliet at the University of St. Francis tonight. Then they too are off until next weekend for finals. Marion's gonna head to Phoenix on the men's side and play a pair of schools from Montana at an event called the Cactus Classic. They'll take on the University of Providence, followed by Rocky Mountain College coming up on the 16th and 17th. Then again, Marion is off after that until December the 30th. And a game that we'll have for you here on the ISC Sports Network, the Red Storm of Rio Grande. That is the last non-conference game for the men on December 30th. That one at 3 o'clock, and you can watch it right here on the ISC Sports Network. What are your expectations as to what we'll see from the Knights here in the opening couple of moments of half number two? Well, you know, I, I go back to what I remember when my son played college basketball. This is a mental marathon. It's really taxing on young people. You're getting close to finals. There's so many things that's got your attention. You're on the road a lot. It really taxes you mentally. This is a veteran team. They should know how to get back into this game. Let's see if they can get refocused and do what this ball club can do. They know to move. They know where Collier needs to be. Get her the ball. It is a busy night on the ISC Sports Network. This is the first of three games. And one very popular program that always makes its weekly debut on Tuesdays. So coming up in about a half an hour or so, you can watch either Greencastle at Danville or Tri-County at Carroll. Both those games are free streams coming up during the 7 o'clock hour. And at 7.30, the latest episode of Query and Schultz comes your way as the fellas talk about the Pacers' in-season tournament continued success, the absolute crazy game that was Colts and Titans <laughs> on Sunday afternoon. Not to mention IU has a new and very confident football coach. All those topics get love discussed. Love it, love it. On Query and Schultz coming up at 7.30. For those of you watching on ISC TV, it will begin at the conclusion of this game, which we estimate to be about 7.45 or 7.50. Well, I'll tell you one thing. He had coached the game, and he certainly got everybody's attention. You got to talk about the program somehow, right? <laughs> That's right. I love it. Jam and I are back together again tomorrow night. We'll be on both ISC and My Indy TV 23. And we jokingly call this event the Lawrence Township Super Bowl. Yes, sir. LC and LN. It's always a midweek game. We expect a complete sellout of yeah. the Bears Den at Lawrence Central. 7.30 tomorrow night, Jan. Thankfully, a last-minute replacement for uh, an under-the-weather Mike Broughton. Get well soon, Coach. 
January expectations on that game while we wait for this one to Well, reset. I'll tell you, usually it's incredibly physical. There are a lot of transition buckets. And listen, LC always plays tough at home. They make it really difficult on the defensive end. You know, LN, they want to push it. Listen, they're averaging 10 points more per game this year than they did last year. So you know what they're going to try to do. So it should be one well of a ball game. LN comes in at 2-0, and LC 2-1. and Again, that's tomorrow night at 7.30 from the northeast side of Indianapolis. Let's see if the Knights can get off a good start. A little half-court zone trap. First possession down by the Cumberlands. And they back into a 2-3. Patriots really do a good job of switching and mixing up their defense. Just a little bit of something to kind of throw you off, Greg. Shot clock at 9. Gerard draws two defenders. McNally's going to have to go. Wainer from 18. Blocked, blocked. No. Partially blocked. And again, great job by Cumberland's throw a little bit of a wrench at Marion. Well, and it forced them to go deep in the shot clock. Collier. And this will be her first made field goal of the game. And, and she's got to be the leader in so many different ways, but nothing you can do more than defensively to get your team back in. A really good anticipation of a steal there by Collier. The easiest of baskets and a violation. Looks like a moving screen coming here against the University of the Cumberlands. Foul will be against Monday, and it will be her third. And Cassie wears number zero. That is Kaylee that wears number 24. Kaylee, the one that committed the foul, and back-to-back -back turnovers by the Patriots. Cumberlands will get a new player in the game for the next stoppage in play. And now back to a man this time down. And Marion says, all day. All right. says, all right, you want to use a high ball screen? We'll use it too. Gerard Freeze, Collier. Excellent move. High off that high ball screen. Get her the ball. She nails it. Two quick points for Collier. Well, Marion got to a great start in the first quarter, too. That That's is true. Couldn't sustain it. They peeled the lead back to seven. Monday this time goes opposite the ball screen. Couldn't get around Wainer. And then foul committed. Cassie Monday commits her second. Take a look at the high ball screen, real quick cut. High ball screen, right there. She only needs a step, boom, 15-footer. Emily Naranjo, oh, excuse me. I saw a four, didn't see the one. Amy Thompson will check in. Collier misses, but Gerard had good weak side position. Good rebound. Draws the foul on Burke. And Free throws coming for Kennedy Gerard. Well, but they got to get that shot. They got to get these shots from outside, or the Patriots just going to pack it inside. Great hustle to get that inside position. And that's first foul on Burke. So Gerard, one of two in the first half from the line. Connects on that one. They need to work towards her a little more, see if they can get a couple fouls on her like the Patriots were allowed to do the Knights inside people. Gerard connects on both. Gerard shooting 65% from the, from the floor on the season, but struggled to find her shot in the first half of this game. Greg, just like that, the Knights have cut the lead in half. First six points the half belong to Marion. Thompson just checked in, fires a three, and Bossy, foul on Bossy, the foul on, it's on Bossy. Bossy was late to get to the spot. So Bossy commits the foul, which will be her second. First foul of the half whistled against Marriott. Steele, catch and shoot three, no. Well, old school from Steele there. She knew she missed immediately, started chasing it, but couldn't track it down. Good opportunity for the Knights right here. She has to make it a one possession game. Two and a half minutes in to the third quarter. McNally realizes she's got a mismatch. Stepped through and got fouled. And Burke bailed her out, just swatted down when she didn't need to. And that's exactly what her coach is telling her. Rick Reeves saying, hey, you, you did. You lowered the hand. Don't do it. You're 6-1. Well, be big. Listen, Marion paid the price for her being on that bench for the majority of that first half. She's a double-double player and is so effective inside that helps that defense kind of take pressure off of the outside shooters. You know, this is not what Marion was two years ago in terms of having Guy at 6'4", right. with Gerard at 5'11", but 
Again, rarely does a team have one post defender or rebounder like Gerard or McNally, and Marion has the luxury of having two. Love the start by the Knights, Greg, down to a three-point ball game. Really came out with great effort. Aliyah Evans will come back in for Marion. Going to replace Wainer. So Evans, Bossy, and Collier will kind of play point guard yeah. by committee with Wainer off the floor. Knights going a little bit taller here. Perryman got five minutes in the first half. Curious as how many she might get in the second half. And Fredericks, who just checked back in, played one minute in the first half. Going to be called for the moving screen foul. And by the way, even though that's an offensive foul, so no free throws, already Cumberland's five fouls. Marion's in the penalty for the final seven minutes of the quarter. So if you're the Knights, where do you want to get? To the free throw line. So back to the zone here by Cumberland's. Who's the zone buster? Collier. Bingo. I rest my case. I think he gave States exhibit A, B, and C <laughs> during halftime. 35 all. Catch and shoot baseline jumper. No. And that's off the hands of a Cumberland's player. And now Marion has already wiped away an 11 point deficit in less than three minutes and a chance to take the lead before we get to the midway moment of quarter number three. All kidding aside, they just come out focused, Greg. Yep. They're doing what they know to do. They were just a step slow. Clearly, McNally not playing hurt them. But listen, that happens. You've got to step up and keep playing. Now to see if they can keep their foot to the gas. And Evans, quality three-point shooter. Bossy is as well. Bossy trying to match Collier. Not that nice time. Nice rebound. Great weak side glass by Gerard. Beautiful rebound. Now back to a matching up in a man-to-man -man here after the missed shot were the Patriots. Shot clock at eight. Collier for the lead. Not that time, but there's McNally. You just get so many extra possessions if you're Marion. And heads up play by Bossy. Felt that defender coming, just took a step and planted. Waited for the contact. Now both the Mondays, each with three fouls for the Cumberlands. Collier didn't quite have her feet set on that three. And as we talked about, are in the penalty. Yeah. So two shot bonus for Allison Bossy. Bossy, a former Indiana All-Star. She and Ella Collier are both part of that group that were named All-Stars but never got to play in 2020 due to the pandemic. Listen, the Knights is a team shoot 78% for the free throw line. And even impervious to your broadcaster jinx in mid-shot. <laughs> so make it a 13-0 run for Marion to I start it. the third quarter. How about that? So too does Steve Brooks as he applauds his team's effort. Take it a while, guess go listen. We ain't going back into that room again. <laughs> we Joy. might want to enhance our play a little bit. Joy Kendrick now with the ball in her hands. First time we have called her name tonight for the Patriots. Well, you're going to do it defensively. Steals shot, no. Great <laughs> check out. Three jerseys for Knights were checked out and then they throw it away. Call your. Just gave Aliyah Evans a little bit too much lead time. Listen, I know you don't like that, and you shouldn't do that, but you'll take that when they're playing as hard as they do. For Collier, that's five turnovers for her in the game, which is a rarity. Yeah. Thompson looking for the back cut. Shot missed. Great oh, save great by save. McNally. And Gerard will wait for a guard. So it is now a four-and-a-half-minute Scoreless drought. Knights a little taller with this lineup, and it's paying off at it on the board in, Greg. Entry pass for Gerard deflected. High low to McNally. Oh, got to short. Got to finish. It was there. Didn't finish. Got to go up strong. Every shot's going to be contested in this game. Going down to st stretch, Greg. You got to go up strong. You just got to anticipate that you're going to get hit going up. Thompson. Her shot is good. Marion asking for a double dribble. There's a lot more leeway given on that one bounce in terms of a catch or no catch than there used to be, but I understand what the ask is for. So first basket of the half, and Collier, good look that wouldn't go. Collier, three of seven from the floor in this game. Three of six in this quarter. Good idea, just didn't get it up quite high enough on the glass, Greg. 
That ball was kicked. Yep, late was with the right one. McNally got a foot to it. And now Burke will check back in. And as we talked about for this Cumberland's team, in part because of the style they play, in part because maybe of, of how lopsided their wins have been, no player has averaged more than 26 minutes a game so far this year. So Burke was getting a breather. Turns, missed it. Good look that wouldn't go. Evans will track down the loose ball. Good find to Collier. Bossy turns down the three. Won't turn down the shot from 14, and oh, she, she comes up again. She yep. sure did. Yep. You can see when she shot that, kind of twisted her knee a little bit. She's going to stay out there. McNally picks up her third foul. Coach Brooks, as of now, rolling the dice. Greg, she went to plant that leg, and it just was an awkward plan, and yep. it just couldn't recover on the shot. Knights have had a couple opportunities here. They let it slip by. Thompson for three, no. And McNally. Look, McNally's kind of like a wider, she has a catch radius. Anything in five feet is going to be hers. Listen, but what a difference maker she yeah. is when she's in there. Absolutely right. So many extra possessions when she is on the floor. A sophomore from Coleraine, north side of Cincinnati. What a feed. Bossy's knee was fine on yeah. that one. And the immediate point to Lee Evans for the great dive. And that's what she can do. Such a smart player. Quick reverse, got her the ball. That's off the foot of the Cumberland's player. Burke from 15, no. Guess who? McNally, another rebound. So McNally now with six boards in 12 minutes play. Well, she averages 13 boards a game. Call here, lets the traffic go by. Slips it for Gerard. Gerard there you and go. one. There you go. Great high pick again, Greg. You ran, they ran that play earlier. I thought Collier may have had the 15-footer, but nobody stops ball, so she penetrates. Take a look. See, it looks like she has a shot right there, but nobody picks her up. Nice bounce pass. Key there is a bounce pass. Well, Marion showing their championship medal. Because, frankly, this is a team that you know, a, a national championship conversation, they're part of that group with all the pieces they return back and the decade-long run this program has been in in women's basketball. Well, right? when, you, when you're ranked like they are and you're as good as they are and you have all the veterans, you get everybody's best game, every single game. And that's tough. I talked about the mental aspect of it, but you've got to be prepared. And given the way they have played tonight, Frankly, the Cumberlands need to be in that conversation, too. Oh, I completely agree. They are so well coached. Asked for over and back pass was tipped, and Burke just kind of had to fire. So the Patriots sitting on two points in this quarter. Well, let's, we gave the Patriots credit for their defense in that first half. Let's give the Knights a lot of credit for their defense in this third period of play. Well, in the third period, Jan, Cumberland's one of ten from the floor, four turnovers. Gerard with a 6-4, Fredericks guarding her. Trying to figure out a way around her, and Fredericks got some arm. Well, their coach felt like it was as clean. Let's see. You can't swat. You're going to get the, the call. Hands are up there. Right there, she swatted. It looked like a little ball, but the officials felt like the arm was contact. Fredericks originally from Lagos, Nigeria. Well, we're at the intensity part of this game where both officials are now having sidebar conversations on, on all these plays. This is, this is championship game type right now, Greg. Coaches are into it. Players are into it. I love it. Adam Abubakar is the official that Coach Reeves is very civilly having a conversation <laughs> with off of our camera. Listen, this is a great opportunity for both these ball clubs, and they know it, and they're playing just like it. So Marion now has outscored Cumberland's 19-2 here in the third quarter. Let, or trailed by 11 in the Knights at halftime. Doing a lot better job of forcing Burke way up at the elbow. 
Lewis, corner three, no. Good check. Oh, yep. my. Yep, it was it was a great checkout yep, a little until too the good. last segment and then kind of an extended chicken yep. wing that time by Evans. The arm kind of extended out there for Evans, and she picks up. Look, she's fine. Take a look here. She's fine on the checkout right there. That'll get you. And, and again, you could tell that there was a bit of a swim move going the other direction. That's fine. You can never extend that extend arm. Extending the arms, you might as well just raise your hand. You're going to get it. Especially out on the wing like that where everybody in the good Lord can see you. Shot clock at 13. The pull by Steele. Tough shot. That's her fourth make in 12 tries. She's got nine. It's the second made field goal of the half for the University of the Cumberlands. McNally up and under. Pretty it. shot. Went in doubt, throw it off the window. Listen, that was a little fall away, but listen, she was under control. Was the keen had really good elevation. On this senior laden team, she is the star of next year and the year after. No for question. Marion. No question. Evans picked her pocket. Evans has played a really good ball game so far, Greg. Well, Evans, a very heady player. She was part of a state runner-up team at Greensburg High School, the 3A level. Oh, tough pass. Yeah. No, nah, not going to happen. Yeah. There's too much traffic to clear. For Marion, their 11th turnover, second of the half. It's big possession for the Patriots right now. Down six and an air on the Knights. Let's see what they do. Monday. Create some space, but missed it. And Evans the rebound. And then Evans is fouled. And so Evans will get two freebies at the other end. So Evans does not get to the line very often. These will be free throws 15 and 16 for her. Fredericks picks up her fourth foul. Hannah McNulty back in for Cumberland's. She played briefly in the first half. Well, Evans a 93% free throw shooter herself. And connects. Been impervious to the Jan Bozier <laughs> broadcaster jinx. So a 19 point swing in this quarter in favor of the home team. Yeah, if you're the Knights right now with 21 seconds, you'd love to have a great defensive possession. Well, trap there by Marion. Again, shot clock and game clock are virtually identical. Step through oh, and Gerard playing so center field. So what? And we saw that a couple of years ago again with Amani Guy at 6-4. Great anticipation. So many players, Jan, would not challenge her, but they challenged Gerard and Kenny go, okay. And so she led the league in blocks instead. Yeah, you know, and good shot blocks are anticipation. McNulty's baseline shot oh, is man. good. That's huge. And that brings it to a two-possession game going to the third quarter. But from 11 down to six up with 10 minutes left to play in this matchup of number six and number 11 in the country. It is the sixth ranked Knights that lead by six. Going to the final stanza on ISC. Meet Zach. Day and night, rain or shine, even just out for a spin, Zach gets around. But we know Zach, and at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know he's been saving up to trade up. IMCU is here to help Zach and you drive your dream. Lock in your rate with pre-approval. It's fast, free, and makes buying the car of your dreams easier. Today, it's all about Zach. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. Tonight's game presented in part by our friends at Tom O'Brien, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. If saving money is important to you, visit Tom O'Brien, Chrysler Jeep Dodge Ram. A proud sponsor of Marion Athletics, Tom O'Brien is Indy's preferred Jeep dealer with two locations and the biggest Jeep inventory in Indiana. To show our support, Tom O'Brien will donate $200 to Marion for every car any student, parent, employee, or friend of Marion buys when you mention this promo. Go nice and go to Tom O'Brien to see how our family works for you since 1933. Let's thank our tremendous ISC Sports Network crew. Thanks to Robin Lynch, Chase Eisnagel, Charlie Hammock, 
on the camera down there. And we have the Josh Baker, by the way. The Ohio State's not in the college football play. We got the Josh Baker on replay. <laughs> and, of course, Vince Morales. Yes, sir, the, the Vince man. Tonight. Hey, Greg, how about having your best offense and your best defensive quarter in the same quarter, I might add. Yep. The Knights get, put in 23, gave up just 16 in that third period. Again, with the ability for the Cumberlands to connect from three-point range. Even if they haven't gone down yet tonight, this game is far from over. Patriots 2 of 14 from behind the arc so far. Steele trying to find space against McNally. Well, you talk about McNally's offense, but her defense may be as big or bigger than her offense. And that'll be a foul against Bossy. See if it's on the floor or on the way up. It's going to be on the way up. So two shots. Yep. But on Bossy gets her third. See what he does here, if he leaves her in or not. I think he has to. So to the free throw line. Monday on the season. 20 of 23 from the line and connects. She is just such a huge piece of the puzzle for Marion. When she's in there, I think I think you leave her in there, and I think he is. Monday makes them both. Back to a four-point game. And because there have been so few makes in this half for Cumberlands, they haven't had a chance to set up their full court press. Well, that was a tough inbound. Collier just did get that thing in. Now Marion will reset. Oh, my. And, and again, Evans is, is not a natural point. They're kind of asking her to play it tonight. Wayner and Perryman, normally the distributors, and you kind of saw the playground move that Evans had. Just kind of curl that ball behind your back as you're trying to set the set the offense. Well, turnovers are a little high tonight for Marion, that's for sure. That is their 12th. Chance to make it a one-score game here for the Patriots. Monday going to work. McNally again. And it's going to be a foul on Lewis. And Marion is maybe more so on the men's side, but it applies to Marion here. The Crossroads League has gotten so good. You're really trying to convince kids, hey, stay at home and play here and don't play Division One. But you're getting Division One level players slash athletes. McNally is that level of athlete. No question Marion. about it. She is such a difference maker. We've talked about her offense and defense, a double-double player, but she's so valuable defensively. Evans knew she had that in the bag. She was calling for that ball from Gerard and knocked it down. Gotcha. Evans now with 10. But she's been consistent all game long. Monday on the drive, got it to go. Bossy had to back off with those three fouls. Yeah, and they knew it, too. That's a smart ball club when you recognize somebody's got three and you go right at them. And back to a four-point game. Gerard, low block, good step through. All day. And one. That's a mismatch for the Patriots right there. Now, they got the taller girls in there, not so much, but great recognition of the mismatch there. Get her the ball. She's so physical, Greg. She uses her body so well when she goes up strong. Gerard, three or four from the line tonight. I'm not sure the Patriots can stay this small for very long, Greg. See how long they go here. A little oh. miscommunication. Everybody here picked up the ball and oh Steele drives right in. That's communication right there. You got to be talking. Nobody picked her up at all. And then Evans pass deflected. And you're curious if, if you'll see Perryman again tonight. She played five minutes in the first half. Just coming back from a bit of a knee issue. Wayner has been sitting since early in the third quarter. Collier frees up from 18. No, but there's McNally. Monday tried to draw a foul. Bossy fires. Got a miss of that. That was partially blocked. I, I'll tell you what, I think that was partially blocked. They didn't see it. Could be wrong.
Get a chance to make it a one score game. Boy, Patriots have a chance to make this really interesting on this possession. Hayworth has made a three already. And does oh, there again. Oh, baby. That's exactly what they needed. How about a one-point ball game? She is two of six from three-point range on the night. Just the third made triple. Knights need a bucket right here. They got to slow down what has now been a little bit of momentum for the Patriots. Bollier, the slip to Gerard. Oh, perfect pass. Your two most experienced players they combined. They, 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 they got to know that. When they need a bucket, that's the dynamic duel to go to. Three to tie it from Hayworth. Got it. Great, we got a ball game, baby. I'm telling you. Uh, you simply felt it was a matter of time until some of those started to go down for the Cumberlands. So we are tied at 53. Evans, the step back. Yes. Evans has a little bit of old microwave Vinnie Johnson in her game. She knows her job. Come off the bench and score. Yep. Monday, and it's not a bad foul by Gerard to give. Monday realized the mismatch being guarded by the five and went at her immediately. Gerard's first foul, second of the quarter. Well, the Patriots average taking 26 threes a game and average hitting 10. So double will come back on. They're going to give Evans a brief breather as Marion has tremendously shortened their rotation. They played 10 in the first half. They have played just seven here in the second half. This is a really good game for both these ball clubs. Two real evenly matched teams. You need a game like this right now, kind of in between the conference. Ball kicked away. Marion tracks it down in bossy. Veteran move, slows it up. Collier turns, they're going to be called for steps. And that will draw the ire of Steve Brooks. Wow, I'm not sure I've seen that. Unless she shifted the feed, didn't see it, but we're a long way away. Well, by rule of thumb, it's kind of hard to travel when you're dribbling, right? That's kind of what I was thinking. Yeah. Monday, shot blocked by Gerard. And a 30-second timeout coming for the University of the Cumberlands. We'll keep it right here with 545 left to play. Let's thank our friends at Indiana Members Credit Union. They are proud to support Marion University. And they now offer a free Marion Knights debit card. The card is included when you open a free IMCU checking account. Get your Marion University Knights debit card today and show your support. Visit any IMCU branch or sign up online now at IMCU.com. Jan, what's going to be the difference these final five minutes and 45 it's seconds? It's going to be on the defensive side. I think the defense inside has really been pretty good. Now, all of a sudden, though, it's shifted outside shooting for the Patriots. So you've got to be careful. You can't just extend your defense too far. you got to got to be really communicating here. We've seen a couple times where the communication were. It wasn't where it has to be. you got to over-communicate in a game like this because the Patriots can go inside, they can go outside. I think the offense has been solid. Defensively, that's where this game is going to be won for the Marion Knights. Steele. McNally got a piece and then got the rebound and tried to get the outlet to Bossy. That is a shot clock reset. They close out by Gerard on Hayward. And that's going to be a screen against Monday, her fourth foul. And another 30-second timeout coming for the Cumberlands. And again, yes, McNally kind of cleared through her, but great job by Charlie Hammock, that elevated camera position we got. Monday never got close to being set on that screen, and hence pointing the other direction. The 30-second timeout presented by our friends at First On Site, formerly more restoration. They're here to help you power through whatever comes your way, from fire and flood to catastrophic storms or biohazards. They have the team, technology, and resources to help you restore, rebuild, and rise. Go Knights. Greg, with 527, it's now coming down to a possession game. There's so many possessions left. you got to get the really good shot selection to close this thing out. Make them count. Yeah. 
Now full court man pickup. That's been a constant on the makes, but even this time on the inbounds play. 1-4 low set. Gerard powers her way up. Offensive foul. Out of the semicircle that time was Lewis. Now Troy Raymond will come over and I think what Steve is saying is that she was inside the circle. We play on. In three to potentially take the lead for the Patriots. And Hayworth is a player you have want to take that shot. Lewis gets downhill, scoop and missed it. Tough shot. Again, Gerard and McNally are so tough to score on low block. And, you know, Greg, the Patriots have went with a smaller lineup for an extended period of time. Somewhat interesting to me. McNally, good tie-up by Monday, was never called. Either way, it's going to be Marion basketball. But Marion, to your point, again, they, they are a the rare inside-out team these days in college basketball but they will especially low block every time with Burke out of the game for the Cumberlands. Shot clock at 14. Now it's seven. Collier wants a screen. Step back three, Collier. No. McNally going to be called for climbing the back. Fourth Marion foul. And that is her fourth with sure 4.26 is. to play. Sure is. He's going to bring Evans back in, Greg. Trying to, flare, trying to free up Hayworth for a flare is what Cumberland's is trying to do. And there it is. Double left her for a second. Enough time to get the shot off. Gerard somehow out of that mess. And then McNally's pass was a bad one. Monday's oh pull was good, and we're tied at 55. Boy, that ball flat out fell in the hands of the Patriots right there. Tie ball game. Getting chippy out there, Greg. And these are two teams that know they can see each other again yeah. in March. Call, you're on the drive. Foul. Good move. Good move to know that you can't get to the free throw line. If they're not set, take advantage. She's as good as anybody in recognizing when the defender has no shot at getting their feet set. McNally will come out, and you kind of got to wonder now if, if Steve Brooks might go offense, defense with her the rest of the way with four fouls. Call, your connects. Marion Seesaw is back in front by a point. Marion won an overtime game right before Thanksgiving on the road at Spring Arbor. So they played in some closes here again. They did lose one out of Nebraska back in early November. Burke will return. Next stoppage in play. Steele. Drives on Gerard and got it. No backside help on the Marion defense. That's once again, you got to yell that out. You really got to communicate if you get beat on that baseline to make sure you get backside help. Nine at 57. Collier almost put that on the table. And then Collier, will they give it to her? No. Foul on the floor. It is two shots. Both teams in the, in the penalty at this point. Anything they can do to continue to get Collier to the free throw line is absolutely a great move. Here comes Burke back into the ball game. And McNulty will join. Hayworth will have a seat. And Hayworth with three of their four makes from three-point range tonight. Collier 11 points, 
nine of those in this half. Connects again. Got that one too. And a timeout taken by Steve Brooks. It is a 30 second timeout. We will keep it right here with 3.02 left to play. Well, I want to remind Marion fans that Marion University Athletics decided to launch their new strategic fundraising campaign to enhance the student athlete experience across campus. Because of the generosity of several Marion donors, all new gifts or pledges between September 1st and April 2024 to athletic scholarship funds and the facility enhancement fund will be matched up to $1 million. To make your gift to support these efforts, please visit marion.edu slash journey to 2030. Additional information can be found at mu-knights.com. Well, Marion's found ways to get Collier to the free throw line. We talked about that at the halftime. Any way that they can find to get her to the free throw line is certainly a big feather in their cap. Bossy will pick up full court. Monday on the drive. Good defense by Collier down low. Now shot clock at 11. Floater by Monday, no. Fight for the loose ball, tracks it down. Then oh. it's going to reach in foul on double, which will be two free throws, a chance to tie the game. Double's first foul. We've referenced the fact that Marion is off now for 11 days after this one. Cumberlands will be back on the road to take on Reinhardt University in Georgia on Saturday. As that one is missed, they'll then head to play Bryan College in Tennessee next Tuesday. Then they'll play two in Florida after that. Monday doesn't miss very many. She's an 80 plus percent free throw shooter. Got that one to go, so a one point game. And Evans again will play the role of point guard here. And normally it's Wayner or Perryman, but both have sat for most of this half. Shot clock at 13. Gerard looks to drive it. That's going to be offensive. And can't argue that call. She extended that arm, and you're going to get that call. There might have been a bit of embellishment on the fall here. <laughs> Take a look. Could be, but that arm, that arm extended. The fish is going to call that nine out of ten times if you lead with the arm. Clock ran when it shouldn't have, so that's they're going to put some time back on the clock and reset here. The arm's okay if you don't lead with it, but if you lead with it and extend it, whether it's Blatant or not, you're going to. It, it looks worse than it is sometimes. You get the call. The three seconds came off the clock and rolling, so that is repaired. So Annie Bucket puts Cumberland's back in front. On the drive off the window, no. And the freshman pulls the rebound That's down huge. for Marion. Now Collier on the attack. Finds double for the three. Are you Got kidding it! me? Are you kidding me? <laughs> the freshman Woo! from Huntington North. How about that, Greg? Got the rebound at one end and hits the three at the other. And then Monday's shot, no good. Look out, they got a player, didn't yeah, see him. Evans was wide open and Marion couldn't get it to her. Great pass by Collier. Collier drew about three red jerseys. Great pass, wide open. And that's a blocking foul, which sends Collier to the line, which is exactly what Marion wanted. Let's go back to Taylor Double. That was her fifth made three of the season. Isn't that awesome? On her 14th attempt. Sometimes you're too young to know better. <laughs> it doesn't matter. But you're, listen, when you get that opportunity, man, have confidence to do something big, and she did. I love it. Collier goes right back to the line. She now leads all scores with 14 points. Almost a story when it hits the rim for Collier. Well, but let's let's call it what it is. She's 
found ways, and they have found ways to get her to the free throw line, and it's clearly been a difference maker. Collier now 52 of 52 from the line this That's season. That's amazing. So six point game, still so two position game. Hayworth back in there. Marion does their best to run her off the line. Bossy. Great effort, great effort. It's gonna be a foul the other direction, yep. It's gonna be a push off on Monday. The arm bar on Bossy, take a look. See, we talk about the arms. See, you see a lot of the extended arms. The official's going to call it if he feels like there was an advantage if that arm was extended, and clearly, again, he thought it was. That's, that's how you get that call, because you see the arm extended almost all the time. The official calls it if he feels like that arm created any type of advantage. For Monday, that is her fifth foul, so she has to come off the floor. She'll finish the game with 11. 11 points, five boards, five assists in 32 minutes. I think it's a really good call because clearly the advantage was kind of being made with the arm again. And again, it is an offensive foul. Oh, Hayworth pass. then gets the deflection. And two points for the Cumberland. So hey, Got to take care of the ball here, Greg. It's a two-possession game. Double into the front court. Again, no need to be in a hurry. And Collier wants the ball. Evans, right back to Collier. Collier poked away, scramble for the ball, and timeout given by the Cumberlands. And for all the things that Collier has done well, eight turnovers for Collier tonight. So a timeout taken by the Cumberlands. Again, it will be a 30-second timeout. Just reminded him, Knights fans, get all the up-to-date information on Knights Athletics at MUKnights.com and follow on Twitter. That's at MUKnights. I'll tell you, both these teams are going to sleep good tonight because there has been a lot of energy used in this floor tonight. Listen, this game's not over. But if you're the Cumberlands, you come away from this game saying, all right, on the road, and we had to play Marion style of game, very much a half-court right postseason type of game. You're going to feel a lot better if you can find a way to, to get a win out of here down four with 33 seconds left to go, but you file this way for March. You go, you now know if you're the Cumberlands, hey, we can hang with the best teams in the country. Yeah, it, it's far from over for sure, but I'll, let's give Marion credit for this. You make a really good point. They control the tempo here in half number two. Collier gets the stop, gets the ball back, and draws the foul from Hayworth. Sometimes the breaks just go your way. Defender bobbled for a moment. Collier showed high on the defensive side. And yeah, but see, she didn't reach. She makes the play without reaching. Reaching gets you more fouls than any one thing you can do as a ball player. If you move your feet and don't reach, you're a whole lot less likely to get that reach call. She never reached at all. Really good defense. Collier, 10 of 10 from the line tonight. Over 1,700 career points for Ella here at Marriott. Steal three, yes. Wow, that's huge. And McNally, because of that fourth foul, did not really give much of a closeout. One score game. Clock doesn't start. And timeout. Marion wisely takes the timeout, which not only that, in women's basketball, you can advance the right. ball. Up to half court. So a full timeout. Let's take it with them. 20 seconds left to play. Marion's lead is three. What a matchup between number six and number 11 in the country. Right here on ISC. Meet Kate. She has a lot to juggle. Family, work. It can lead to trying days and tired nights. But we know Kate. And at Indiana Members Credit Union, we know at some point her space at a premium life may change. IMCU is here to help Kate and you find your space. Now, add on a remodel with an introductory rate of 3.9% APR on a home equity line of credit. Today, it's all about Kate. Tomorrow, it's all about you. Because at IMCU, it's you that matters. You know, during the break, our producer, Vince Perelez, says it sounds like a club in here. <laughs> and he's right. Joining the M Club is the absolute best way to support student-athletes at Marion <laughs> University. For more information, oh, visit marion.edu slash mclub. Dance moves not needed to apply. Greg, you're on your game. I love it. 
That's beautiful. All right, 20 seconds left to go, and obviously for Mary, you're trying to get the ball in Ella Collier's hands yes. on the inbound, and then force the Patriots' hand in trying to foul your top free throw shooter. Yeah, and listen, let's give Coach Brooks a lot of credit. That was a big-time timeout for a lot of reasons. They're going to get to advance the ball, and they were in trouble. That was a big-time timeout to give his club not only a little bit of breathing room, but the ball in a whole lot better position, and they were about to lose it because they couldn't get it in bounds. Both teams have two timeouts remaining, as you see on your screen, and both teams in the two-shot penalty. Got to take care of the ball here if you're Marion, Greg. And again, Gerard gets it right back to Collier. And foul called. And I'm not sure Cumberland's actually wanted that foul called so quickly. That was a little quick. So Collier will shoot two. McNally will come back in. And she and Evans will switch spots probably the rest of the game in the opposite way you think. And I'll put McNally back in for defense. Well, you've made a mention a couple of times. Evans kind of playing out of position but you know she's made a few mistakes but overall Greg she's played a pretty steady ball game and a miss uh oh first of the season for Ella Collier just get it out of the way now put another 50 back <laughs> 50 in a roll now 54 of 55 Collier makes that one and now Cumberlands will take the time out to advance the ball with 17 seconds left well, to go in the game. Well, typically when you miss a free throw, the legs are just ever so slightly tired. You can understand why. So we reference the 50-40-90 club. That is now the mark of any shooter. Ella has hit that numerous times in her career. She's not there this year because she's not there yet from three-point range. 53% from the field, only 32% from three-point range this season but again, had not missed a free throw until tonight. That is the 10th game of the season for Marion. Yeah, and the three might be a little more difficult for her this year because she's going to get the better defensive, quicker player on her this year. So she may have to change her game ever so slightly. She can hit that three coming off that ball screen, but just a one-on-one -on -one type play will probably be a little bit more difficult because she's going to get a quicker, harder, the, probably the best defender on the opposing team. Doesn't have to be a three for the Cumberlands, but it has to be points this time for the visitors from Kentucky. And they play in the Mid-South Conference to the Patriots, and that's a league that's going through some changes. They had four schools exit the lead, or the league, I should say, at the end of last year. The one that we would see the most of, which would make sense, was the northernmost team as the Mackle family is enjoying tonight's game. Steve, the tennis coach, Cassie, the well, she runs the show, really, <laughs> in, in, in the athletics department here at Marion University. But I've known this and noticed this in prepping for the Cumberlands tonight is that they don't play a league game until January the 11th because they are down to seven schools in their league. Yeah. So to their credit, they have gone out and tried to find as many quality games as they can. I like this. I like this for both ball clubs. This is, I just think, really good competition as much as you can play it. I mean... It just makes you better. On the drive, shot block. I think it's, yep, off the head of the player, wow. yep. Gerard with the block and got it to go off the top of the noggin of the Cumberland's player that was on the drive. And now again, Marion will take a timeout to simply advance the ball into the front court. That's a big time defensive play. Well, Kennedy Gerard has made those ever since she made the Oh, drive about three miles from Pike High School to get to Marion. That was Jaden Cox who, on the drive, tried to challenge one of the better post defenders in the NAIA. You know, Greg, we talked about what would be the difference in this ball game, especially in the second half. And clearly for me, it has been Marion's defense. They picked it up a complete different notch over that first half. Eight blocks for Marion for the game. That's the fourth for Gerard. And again, honestly, that's what this Marion team hangs their hat on. That's what Coach Brooks has been about at every time he's coached, whether it's Indiana Wesley and St. Francis or now here at Marion. Gerard is fouled, forcing it rid of the basketball. So it'll be Gerard that will go to the line. Gerard is five of eight from the stripe. That foul on Hayworth is her fifth. So the leading three-point shooter. Well, I will say this about this Patriot Ball Club. They are so well coached. 
they had a little bit of a dry spell in that third period of play, Greg, that I think we give Mary a ton of credit for that because their defense clearly picked it up a notch. But this is clearly a Patriot ball club. You've mentioned a couple times that they could see again. And we've mentioned that this is there are no seniors on this ball club, and they're, they're going to get better. I mean, the same thing said about Marion last year we're saying about <laughs> It is very year. true. I, I Listen, I have walked away. I will walk away saying this Patriot ball club is, is, is impressive because they are. So Girard against a two-score lead. I found it just a little interesting that he kept Brooke out as long as he did. That was interesting to me because she is such a force inside. Makes that one. Cumberland's not going to burn their time, or, or are they? Yep, they are. They're going to take their last time out, so they'll advance the ball. But they cannot do that again with under 12 seconds to play. And Rick Reeves, the head coach at the Cumberlands. And by the way, I want to make sure that we offer congratulations to the Cumberlands that their soccer team was victorious earlier today. Of course, the soccer team at Marion made the national final last year. Well, this year it was the Cumberlands that beat Spring Arbor in the semifinal and won the national championship of the day. So congratulations yeah, absolutely. to the Patriots of the University of the Cumberlands on the women's soccer side. And if you're Marion, you're one stop away. One stop ends the game. Well, this, if they can hold on here, Greg, two possession game, this will be a victory that was certainly hard earned. They went into halftime, and you mentioned they were somewhat a little bit disarray offensively and a little bit defensively, especially in that second period. And they came out and just had a different complete focus and got this thing turned around. And listen, they cut that lead in half within a couple minutes of that third period of play. That's the championship medal and just sheer experience this Marion team has. Yeah, no question about it. That's when the veterans should and did take over. Been there and done that. And Collier going to be called for a foul. Trying to knock away the loose ball. So now two free throws yeah, coming up. That's the last thing you wanted to do if you're Marion. So Burke will go to the line. She has three of four tonight. Wow. Evans will come in. Listen, this thing ain't over. Nope. She hits these two. It's a one possession game, my, my friends. Again, Marion can take a timeout here and advance the ball to the half court. First things first, Burke connects. She's a nice ball player. She really is. Burke on the season, a 58% free throw shooter. She has made four of five today. Just a sophomore. Rose Hill, Virginia. Got him. Here comes the timeout, you would think, from Marion. Yep. Yep. Wow. What a change of events right there, Greg. It ain't over. So both teams are out of timeouts after this one taken. It is a 30-second timeout. And our next Mary University basketball broadcast will come after Christmas. It'll be the Marion men when they take on Rio Grant, the fighting Bevo Francis's of Rio Grant coming this way. Not their real nickname, the Red Storm. We'll have that one for you coming up in late December on the ISC Sports Network. And we will have a series of doubleheaders. And if you're not familiar with this yet, the Crossroads League has now gone full doubleheaders. And so no more men's games on Tuesday, women's games on Wednesday, and both play on Saturday. It is now a Wednesday-Saturday league. So if we're here for one team, you'll see the other. Our first doubleheader in league play, Wednesday, January 10th, against Bethel. Did McNally check in properly? Official scorer asking a question.
Not really sure what they're talking about. Right. McNally's good to go. Love to hear what they're talking about. Right. Obviously, it has something to do with substitution. Right. So McNally has to go back to the bench. And I wonder if she could not come back in because no time had elapsed off the that's, clock. That's exactly what it is. So Gerard back out there. Evans finds Gerard. Gerard got rid of it. Evans is fouled. And again, while Collier's the best free throw shooter, Evans doesn't mind the pressure either. And again, let's point out, no timeouts either direction. Neither team can advance the ball. So make or miss on the second free throw. Cumberland's have to bring it the length of the floor. And Evans connects. Evans. Very comfortable in situations like this. She's that type of player, Greg. She almost like welcomes pressure. We have a new statement in the state. She has a Kurt Signetti level of confidence <laughs> when it comes <laughs> to making free that throws. That is a pretty eye one right now, and I love it. It's a high bar. Yes, sir. Don't want a foul, to say the least. Shot blocked by double, and that's really it. Bossy finds a teammate, that's it, and that's all. Great battle by these two teams, which is what you expect between number six and number 11 in the country. Again, Cumberland's led by 11 at halftime. Marion wiped that away within three minutes. It was a 17-point swing from the start of the third quarter to the end, and Marion has kind of kept the Patriots at bay the rest of the way. Final score, 70-65, Jan, your final thought. Well, this is a Patriot ball club that averages 90-plus per game. They were held to 65. I really felt like it would be defense that could win it, and I think it did. I would say this. I think the Cumberlands know a lot more about their team at 8-1 than they would have at 9-0. No question. That's a good basketball team. Do not be surprised. These two teams will see each other again coming up in March. For Jan Bozier and our entire ISC Sports Network crew, this is Greg Rakestraw. Thanks for joining us. Knights win by five on the ISC Sports Network. Does your school offer high quality education? Does it offer virtual or hybrid options? Marion University Preparatory School educates students in a safe, faith-based environment focused on college and career exploration. Here at Marion University Preparatory School, we empower parents and help students to master what they love and learn as they live. We are now enrolling students in grades six through nine this fall. Full financial aid packages are still available. Act now to make MU Prep your school for 2022. Marion University is like a home to me. 